Hey you, I'm Sarah Turner. I'm a freelance copywriter and copywriting mentor. And I want to talk to you about how to start freelance copywriting seven mindset essentials. Because here's the deal. If you don't work on your mindset and on the things that I'm about to talk to you about in this video, you are going to have a much more difficult time freelance copywriting. Because honestly, one of the biggest barriers to our success is ourselves. I can tell you because I've been there. I've been in freelancer purgatory where every day was a struggle and every day I wanted to give up. And it wasn't until I implemented these mindset, thoughts, techniques, whatever you want to call them, into my life that I was able to actually have a freelance business that I was stoked to get out of bed for. So it's like a night and day difference. So trust me, you really want to incorporate these. And it's also kind of where I see newbies make a little bit of a um, awkward transition when they're first starting because they don't realize how important they are. So let's just do it. Go ahead and jump in. So the first one is the employee versus the business owner mindset. When we are leaving our traditional nine to five jobs to become freelancers or business owners, and I really use those words interchangeably because you are both. When you leave a nine to five and you are suddenly this business owner, it can be a bit of a transition to remember that you are now entering into conversations with clients as an equal. You are not an employee and therefore your discovery calls are not interviews and your emails or your outreach are not resumes. You are a person with a valuable skill who is bringing to the table valuable information and you are equals. So I really want to encourage you to start thinking of yourself as a business owner. I know it's a little intimidating for people when they're first starting out, but you can do it. I promise. I've helped so many people through this, but really start to think about yourself as a business owner and not as an employee and approach your interactions with your clients this way. Also, this will help you come across as less desperate, less needy, which is likely to turn off your your potential client and even scare them away. So that is the first one. The second one is working on your abundance versus scarcity mindset. So this is something that I really want to encourage you to take the time to journal about and to kind of look for clues throughout your day because we all have beliefs that come from both abundance and both scarcity. So abundance is when you feel like there is plenty to go around. You know you meet an abundance-focused entrepreneur when they are not worried about their competition, when they're not stressing out about where the next potential client's going to come from, where they're in a state, what it seems like as a state of flow, because they are, you know, confident in their ability to figure things out. Because that's really what it's all about. It's just building that confidence to be sure in yourself that you can figure things out. So the opposite end of the spectrum is scarcity mindset, where you are terrified and letting fear run the show. Sure, we're all going to have fear. It's not going to go away completely. But when you let scarcity mindset run the show, then you do weird things like try and lock clients into multi-month retainers, which, you know, can be from a good place. But if it's from a scarcity place where you're afraid they're going to leave, and you're not going to have enough money and you're not going and you're going to be living from pay to paycheck to paycheck. It makes you kind of act weird in your discovery calls and it shows up in your, um, you know, in your emails and the way you interact with people and they can sense it. And it's a big turn off, right? You get it can be really scary to come across somebody who's like, I need you to work with me. So knowing that and challenging and thinking about when you have scarcity mindsets and fears show up in your life is super important. And it also plays out in weird ways, too. It can play out even in relationships, not just scarcity of money, but scarcity of, you know, enough love or time or affection from people in your life. It is a powerful motivator, whereas working on abundance, which means, you know, reminding yourself that there really is plenty to go around, not looking at other people as competition, you know, then you'll be more open to collaborating with them, which is amazing, and you'll just feel so much better going about your day. So take some time to dig into this because this could be another video all on its own and maybe it will be, but it's something that is really worth cultivating in your life. The next one is to work on growing your own self-worth. And this is a really important thing because so often when you are in charge of pricing your own worth, if your self-worth isn't in a good place, 
you're likely to not charge enough for your work. So our self-worth and what we charge for our work is really, really intertwined. And so it's important to do things to grow your self-worth. And for everyone, it's different. But it could look as simple as, you know, saying no to things you don't want to do, not making up white lies around like maybe some people invite you in places and you're a people pleaser and you tend to like make up these kind of excuses as to why you don't want to go. You know what? It's going to help you grow your self-worth to just stand in your in your true self and say, I don't want to do these things. It's okay. You can still be polite while you do it. So there's all these little things about growing your self-worth. It could be, you know, working out more so that you feel better. It could be, you know, doing the things you really love to do. It could be putting yourself first for an hour rather than your kids. You know, this is something that we all need to work on and it looks very different. But I want you to take the time to really think about how you feel about yourself and how that might be showing up and what you charge for your work. The next one is learning not to take things personally. When you start to work on personal development and mindset work, you start to realize that your own reactions to things generally come from, you know, conditioning or things that happened in your past or your childhood or stuff you were told by your parents over and over again. And it's so much more intertwined into your personal experience as just a human on this earth that when you start to really do the mindset work, you start to realize it for yourself. And when you realize it for yourself and you start interacting with people, you start to realize that they are also reacting from a place of usually personal experience because personal experience colors the way we interact with the world, the way we view things and our perceptions. It's why two people can watch the same event and have completely different conclusions, right? So when you start to really understand this, you start to realize that other people's reactions to you aren't always, in fact, often aren't a reflection of you. So this is super important when you are a freelance copywriter because you are going to be submitting your writing to other people. They're going to be seeing it. They're going to be giving you feedback on it. You're going to have a client who's grumpy one day and shoots off a snarky email. And if you can just learn to kind of separate yourself from your work and realize that other people are having, you know, entire days, you know, maybe they had got really bad news that day. Maybe something horrific in their, happened in their life and someone passed away and they sent you that snarky email. When you start to realize all of that, you really can learn to not take things as personally. And so I always get frustrated when people say copywriters have to have tough skin. I actually think you can learn to not just toughen up your skin, but to really have more empathy for the people you're interacting with on a day-to-day basis and realizing deep within yourself that it's not always a reaction of who you are and you know what you're worth in this world because those two things are so wildly separate. But we tend to intertwine them and really are you know too often overly impacted by what others think of us so what you work you can do on that is going to not only just help you with your business but it's going to help you in your personal life it's going to make everything feel less heavy and you're going to feel a lot lighter so work on that work on that where you can the next one is to know that client outreach is a bit of a numbers game but that is a good thing as often this idea is um you know, presented as something that is makes this a painful process and client outreach is miserable. But if you think about it, if you just stick with it and you are consistent and you keep showing up every day and putting in a little work here and a little work there, you're going to see success. So it's actually a really inspiring thing with just a slight mindset shift. So I want to encourage you to not let it be discouraging, not let it drag you down, but realize that it's something that we all have to do when we're first starting out and building a name for ourselves, and that it will get easier with time. And every day you put in a little work, you're going to be building momentum on and on and on, and it will get easier. So that is one I really want you to also focus on. The next one is that saying no is just as important as saying yes. And what I mean by that is when you're starting out, especially when you're starting out as a freelance copywriter, you're going to want to say yes to everything. And I get it because you're trying to pay the bills. It's really scary. You don't know when the next client's going to come from. But the problem with saying yes to clients who, you know, aren't willing to pay you for your work or are condescending or belittling or anything like that is that it is such a drain on your energy. 
and you've got to protect your energy and time. Time is your most precious resource. You can't get that back. It's really important. So when you say no to things that aren't going to like help you get closer to your goals, you are keeping that precious space and time for the things that are actually going to help get you there. So it is just as important to say no as it is to say yes. I actually heard somebody who was working with a copywriting uh, mentor and that mentor told them that they should never say no to any work ever. And I was like, ah, don't do that. You will burn out. Not only will you burn out, but you won't be excited about your work, right? So the last one I want to leave you with is budgeting your energy. Again, this kind of, kind of ties with the last one, but budgeting your energy as a freelancer is so important because you will notice that when you are in alignment with your work and you're feeling really good and you're in a state of flow, you will feel like you have almost endless energy. And then when you have times where you're working with a client that you really don't like or is really like rude to you, for example, or even you're doing work that isn't, um, you know, super fulfilling or isn't your strong suit, uh, that can be a big, big drain on your energy. Now, I don't want you to confuse this with, you know, procrastinating because something's new and you're intimidating. You should still push through that resistance. And I don't want to, you know, confuse it with not trying things because you don't love them or not don't respond to your emails because you don't like responding to emails. Obviously, there are going to be elements in our work that require, you know, some discipline and pushing through. But I bet you there is a way that you could be budgeting your energy better. It might be paying someone to clean your house. That was a big deal for me. I always felt like I had to clean my own house because that was important. And that's, you know, I just I felt too like fancy or like I was spoiled and I just felt like I had to clean my own house. And so making that mindset shift of like taking that piece of project that works, I'd like a clean house and giving it to someone else. It freed up so much time and energy in my life. And it is something that I continue to look at. I sometimes will take uh, time and think about what in my business isn't bringing me joy right now? What in my business is soul sucking? And if there is a way for me to outsource it to someone to, you know, maybe hire a virtual assistant, I do that. And if I don't have the funds to do that right now, I definitely make sure it's on my like strategy and goal plans for like the next few months. So those are a few things that I want to leave you with to help you when you're starting freelance copywriting. It is so important to focus on your mindset. It is so, so important. It is the difference between struggling and surviving to absolutely thriving, I know from experience. So go ahead, hit that thumbs up button if you like this. Don't forget to subscribe. And you know I love to hear those comments. That is how I come up with new videos for you. I am here to help and I wanna thank you for being here.